that girl, she's African-American. I'm like, no, I'm not African-American. So it's like dealing with all of that, like you're African-American to non, um, you know, folks of color or to non um, West Indian or uh, South Asian folks. Mm -hmm. And then within like the black community, it's like, no, you're black. We're claiming you as black. That's it. You just get to claim black. And then the South Asian community, it's like, oh, but you're half black. So you're more in the black side than you are on the Indian side, especially depending on how you look. Like if you have more Indian features, then I guess they'd be more apt to claim you. If you have more Afro features and they see you as a black person. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Indian matchmaking. And we thought of Nadia, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, and how she's in the Guyanese and she's trying to find love to a matchmaker, mm -hmm. like an Indian matchmaker. I remember those conversations, right? And like, I've dealt with that because I've, you know, dated guys um, that were either like born in America, but their family are from um, India and South Asia, or they came from directly from India, right? And like those conversations, like, how do you explain this? Um, and then the cultural difference too. And then on Lily, I remember it was maybe like a year or two ago, I, there was some article written about her, like about kind of like the anti-Black things that she does mm -hmm. and um, how she was trying to claim the word boss. I think she got it like yeah, on the Bo dictionary. B-A-W-S-C, right? Boss. Uh -huh. her, yeah. yeah. Is, that a, is that a Caribbean thing? Yeah, it's, isn't that a Caribbean mm -hmm. thing? It's more of like a Af it's more of like a black like an African American type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um to say like I'm a boss. Okay. But then, you know, she has the cornrows and then she says she's a boss and then she's I, like I saw that one. I was just like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't know. Tread lightly, you know. And I yeah. feel like if the opposite side of maybe like a black person was doing something Punjabi, like they would be crucified. Like yeah. there was no way the community would stand back and let them, mm -hmm. you know, claim that, especially yeah. if they're, they have no affiliation with the culture. Yeah. So yeah, I just like being aware. It's really interesting to see and how it, uh, like like the black African community, but also the Caribbean community influences um, a lot of South Asians, mm -hmm. but then the credit's not always given. And mm -hmm. Yeah, Drake, yeah. his whole voyage to the <laughs> West Indies was in interesting. Um, well, I remember when he first started making music and I was like, when he started going into the Caribbean, I, I figured he was probably influenced by Rihanna because he was like in love I with her for the longest. Saying. Drake then went in for a kiss and this happened. <laughs> Nothing though could overshadow Rihanna's shining moment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's actually Caribbean. She's like a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. She's um, her. She was born and raised in um Barbados. Her mother, her mother's bar from Barbados. Her father's from Guyana. No way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so she, she came like pretty late to the United States, like after she was 18, 16 or eighteen or something like that. Yeah, she was like sixteen, I think, when she moved here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's. Uh, Indo Afro, the she's Dukla, like me, and so is Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj, her father's Indian, her mother's yeah, black, yeah, born and raised yeah. in um, oh Trinidad. Well, she came to America when she was five, and she actually, we grew up in the same neighborhoods. Like, I'm also oh, from yeah. Southside Jamaica, Queens, and mm -hmm. that's where Nicki is from. How do you feel when, like, like, do you feel like Nicki Minaj, like, um, portrays her South Asian side? Cause I personally just, I don't follow her that like closely, but mm -hmm. like, do you think like it's pro problematic that she doesn't like focus a lot on her South Asian side or I don't, I don't know. Like, I like, don't. Like, Cause you do both, you know, like you're ping hong. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't, because I think for each person is different. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also something that's kind of problematic. It's like the one drop rule. Where it's like, if you have like a drop of African blood, then you're black, like automatically. Yeah. And what I found, especially as someone who's like Afro Indo, there's always this pressure to choose, pick a side. You have to be, and generally it's black. Like if you have a black parent, you need to be black. You can't 
really you're identifies kidding. anything else. And to identify something else is like anti-black. It means that you're ashamed of being black or that like there's some oh, type oh, of oh, issue oh. there. Oh. And I found like whenever there are people that are like mixed black and white, they don't have that same encounter. Like they're allowed to be mixed or to be black if they want. I mean, most mixed people don't claim white, but they don't force them to pick a side. Like you just get to be mixed and you can just be that, you know? But I found like being um, Afro-Indo-Caribbean, like you have to be black, you have to pick a side, or it's like an issue that you're South Asian or that you want to express being South Asian. And so with Nikki, I don't have an issue with it. It would be cool. She has acknowledged from time to time, but I also know that she doesn't have a relationship with her father. Yeah. yeah. The Indian one in her family. So I get the dissociation. Um, but she's also like a, a rap artist. She's in hip hop and the one drop rule. They see you as black. Like if you have a black mother or you, you're mixed, you know, you're half black, like you're automatically black. And it's like, you don't get to express anything but being black. So I, I think that's something that that's interesting. we need that to change. Yeah. Like that, mm -hmm. that even being biracial, even as being biracial, you don't have that like social freedom or even that community support to be you. You have mm -hmm. to choose like a side. Wow. But it makes sense yeah. seeing the culture. <clears throat> I'm like, there's so much anti-blackness in our culture where if someone has black blood in them and they, they they look more black in terms of like they look more black all of a sudden like we kind of turn our backs on them right like we don't yeah. like oh no they look black they sound black they are black right and that's the that's the whole unfortunate side of it i get i get why the afro community is so protective about it the afro like but like also it sounds like the afro community is against anyone saying that they're also part of something else because it's anti-black mm -hmm which is another issue, which we can't speak on because it's not our community. Yeah, but it's not our community, but... Still, that's very interesting to hear. Um, so it looks like you're getting pulled on both sides. Yeah. But more yeah, so it's pushed war. away and pulled. So it's like, you really are, it's almost like an incentive to just say I'm black. You're getting mm -hmm. pulled by the black community and you're getting pushed away by the, like the South Asian community. So as you might be like, yeah. oh, like, I guess I'm black. <laughs> yeah, I'm black, right? Because it's like, and then non people who are not familiar see you and like, oh yeah, that girl, she's African American. I'm like, no, I'm not African American. So it's like dealing with all of that, like you're African American to non, um, you know, folks of color or to non um, West Indian or uh, South Asian folks. Mm -hmm. And then within like the black community, it's like, no, you're black. We're claiming you as black. That's it. You just get to claim black. And then the South Asian community is like, oh, but you're half black. So you're more in the black side than you are on the Indian side, especially depending on how you look. Like if you have more Indian features, then I guess they'd be more apt to claim you. If you have more Afro features and they see you as a black person. Mm -hmm. And um, I look at your like feed and you're like killing it in the Navratri costumes like I loved like that girl boss like thing that you did and I was just like wow this girl's got like she's got power she's just like you know wow like I, lo I love that you're in your power and you're taking you're reclaiming that you know reclaiming all that shame and all that guilt that you know both sides are putting on on like you know the Dougla community like so yeah no I think that's really great like how do you like do did you face like a lot of criticism for it because like you know you know how you mentioned like people people uh like put a label on you as black right like mm -hmm. so you get a lot of criticism from other south asians or something like that when they see your feet I, yeah i have um i've had like indo-caribbean people do it i've had south asian people attack me for it and i've had like african-american people um that are like, you're not Indian or you're black or mm -hmm. why are you wearing my culture's clothing? Why are you appropriating? Or you need to like, stop doing that. Um, I've had, yeah, some people like come out and just like, let me have it. And <laughs> I'm just like, um, okay. Like, do I need to give you a 23 in me? Or do I need to show you my yeah. ancestry tree? Yeah. What like, 
at what point are you allowed to like do you deem like who's allowed to wear indian clothes and express like indian culture so it's, it's been interesting and then like going into south asian spaces and then sometimes people are like you know kind of sizing you up and down or they're like curious as to why you're there or do you kind of stand out and they're like oh yeah you like indian clothes or oh, do you like indian food do you like spicy food like they talk to me as if i'm an outsider yeah. and then like explain or over explain things or like yeah. there's something happening in hindi and i i do understand hindi but um it's like oh this means this i'm like wait i don't need you to translate it like i understood what they were saying mm -hmm. um but it's just always kind of being othered yeah so then do you just ignore it at this point or do you just like like how do you how if do you... i can or like laugh it off or just just correct them like hey like this is my culture this is my family tree um i understand <laughs> hindi like i don't need you to explain it yeah you know and sometimes i laugh at them and i'll just say yeah my you know my family is indian like i i understand indian food i, I know what this is so like i love spice I'm like little do you know like over eating scotch bonnet over here and all that you know it's like like do you <laughs> just like too much. that um you love like masaba and masaba and i'm a huge fan of like that show like what was your like i guess like favorite sort of like what do you what do you love about that show like you know like how do you find that show? Like, do you feel, I know that she's like, you know, mainland Indian and, and, but she's also like West Indian too. So she is like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Caribbean, I guess. Like, so like, yeah. How did you like, how did you feel when that show like came out and stuff like that? And was being, and, and, you know, was being predominantly produced and showcased in India, in the mainland. That was monumental. That was huge for me. Um, I had like this, emotional moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, you know? Because my grandfathers are, you know, one is Punjabi, one's Gujarati, and they met my grandmothers on the island, Jamaica, Trinidad. Whoa. And um, so it was like, I saw my story through her in a way. Yeah. And I remember hearing about her and I just recently found out about Masaba and I was at a Gujarati function and um, the person who was telling me about her, she is Gujarati, but she looks Punjabi. A lot of people will mistake her for Punjabi. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're just like Masaba Gupta. And I'm like, oh, she's like Nina Gupta's daughter. So she starts telling me the story. And there was like some other aunties around and they're telling the story. And it's like, yeah, Nina, she was uh, this Bollywood, you know, she's like, um, yeah, Shirley KPJ. She had an affair with this, uh, man, you know, Viv Richards is cricket here from Jamaica and she has a baby. So I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, let me look her up. Find out she's a fashion designer and she's killing it in, in India. Stores all over the country. Um, and just, I started just delving in and like researching her and looking up her story and watching videos and interviews. And I was like, this woman is incredible. So when the show came out, I was just like, this is everything I needed and then some, because I, prior to that representation of Afro-Indo, like Afro-Indo people, especially within the Indian media was just like, didn't exist. I didn't, I didn't see anyone. I mean, yeah. we're fighting a whole colorism situation in India, right? Where they're not even showing like women of a certain complexion like unless you're fair you don't need to get on camera so yeah. to then go in a step further and show someone who's actually like half black mm -hmm. and give them their own show was like monumental so i remember seeing it and i just felt like oh my gosh i'm finally being seen like i'm being represented and i love the show all six episodes i'm so sad it was only six episodes um but that show is so hilarious. <sighs> My favorite scene is when she's um, meeting her therapist, the kooky, crazy therapist who's yeah. like chasing after her cheating husband. And she goes up on her and she starts sniffing her. 
that just took me out. And she was like, what the F? Did <laughs> she just smell me? <laughs> Yeah, and and she's like she's a good actress too like because she's a fashion she designer and i was just like okay like you know what maybe she can't act you know like this is monumental but i was just like mm-hmm. i don't know about her acting right yep. like because he she doesn't have that's training. fair and i was just like holy damn like her mom taught her some stuff her mom gave her some good tips because she yeah convinced me i was just like oh this like is this masaba the fashion designer or is this masaba like the film fair nominated actress she's good right yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's always a hit or miss because it's with star kids, you're like, eh, you're getting opportunities because you're a star kid. But are you actually talented? And mm-hmm. with her, it was like, no, she deserved it. Yeah. And it, it was number one for a few weeks in India, like Indian Netflix. And I'm like, wow, like there's so much support and they're getting there's a second season. Gonna happen. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think they're filming season two now. So... I'm excited to see what's yeah, to come. Wow. I never watched that show. I'm like, I'm like we, really... have, we have it up lined up for our reaction video. Yeah, we have. That's yeah. not, I'm going to wait for that from the first episode. Yeah, we do. Solana, we do reaction. I don't know if you saw. Actually, we didn't post anything. About no, I didn't post any up yet. But we, do, didn't, we do. We do. long to edit. Yeah, yeah we do reaction, reaction videos to stuff. And that, and Masha was really excited to show me. She's like, we got to watch Masaba. Masaba. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but I'm like, I'll react to it. I'll react to it. Like, let's watch it. Um, and now I'm actually really excited because <laughs> that's something. Yeah, it's un- it's unreal. Like for me, it was just like I was just like, oh, this is this is. I was I was I don't even know. Like I kind of forgot about Masaba Gupta until I was just I saw her and then I was like, wait, this is that fashion designer. Like her designs are amazing. Like you know, mm-hmm. everyone wears them, even in like the U.S. Everyone mm-hmm. wears stuff. Like it's high high tier high fashion. I was just like, oh my god, she's a great actress. What what can she not do? <laughs> and she's gorgeous too. Mm-hmm. Like she's divine and she's gorgeous. And I'm just like, wow. And it was good because it was modern. And they didn't focus on her color. They didn't focus on her being half black. She's just yeah. an Indian woman in India. Yeah. doing her thing in her 30s navigating in her 30s yeah navigating. And i was just about to ask that is it is it like is it like a colorism story like is that how they did it or was it literally a successful woman i mean there did? are microaggressions i guess she faces like i think there were some there are microaggressions like when she sees her print and the guy's like yeah this is from africa and she's like what <laughs> like no this is my print why are you selling my print yeah um but I think it's it was shot through the lens of her story because like the first episode, um, they're showcasing like what she went through through her divorce and like how she finds her independence. So it's kind of like a loosely based um, story of her actual life. Nina's side as well, and you get to see her life. And I love that they just showed Masaba in her natural element. She was doing her thing, and they didn't sexualize her she had a hand in how it was um how the script went how the direction of the the show goes but she's like desirable she has like love interest on the show and she's just like doing her thing and and i thought that was so awesome just like see her normal and and not like make her a spectacle or a fetish or a taboo topic which is kind of sad that that's like, that's like a positive, like, oh, I'm so happy that they didn't make her like an object. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm so happy I, they didn't do this to her. Like, and as a guy, when I watch characters, I don't worry about that. So like, kind of sucks that that's something that, that's something that female characters have to go through where it's like, mm-hmm. she had to have a hand in the script so they don't mess it up, <laughs> essentially. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, it's something I would never think of. Like, I would not be worried about that. So it's it's an, it's an interesting take to hear you say that. To be like, yeah, at least like they didn't take her black side and make it the whole thing, or yeah. take like her feminine side and be like over sexualize it or anything like that. Yeah. Which really sucks. <laughs> I think about like it just sucked to hear. I didn't like to hear that. So hopefully, there's more content like that out there, and there's more. So do you think it's gonna lead to more, or do you think they're gonna end it at Masaba and then just like kind of? move on from there again <laughs> move backwards i think it's move backwards of, to like where they were right they always do <laughs> back to the yeah, lights no. like what's that 
Right. When they had that song, I don't know if you all remember, um, there was a, which movie was that? Oh, it was one with um, Ishan Katar. Oh, I love, he's an amazing actor. Chrissy, do you know? Hey, we, uh, huh? Is it the Beyonce song? Yeah, it's a Beyonce song. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? Like, they're like, oh yeah, um, she's so beautiful and she's so fair that Beyonce would like be yeah. Yeah, nervous or, or like jealous or something. I'm like, how dare you? That's so <laughs> rude and disrespectful. <laughs> you had Beyonce in your country. Like she performed, for, I forgot, someone was having a wedding and they, um, they hired Beyonce to come and she went to India to perform at this wedding. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she has so much reverence for the culture. But why would you bring up her name and in a, oh, a colorist way? That's, that's so uncalled for. But yeah, I'm like 2020, we're still talking about color and we're praising women for having fair skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think it was wild. I think I mentioned it to Sami because you were talking about colorism. Um, and it's wild because before the British showed up in India, right? Cause, cause like a lot of, right, it's like Eurocentric, but a lot of it, like a lot of beauty in India still comes from the gods and goddesses. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and they were made to have Eurocentric features. They were changed when the British showed up basically. Like, and so that's Yeah, wild. they changed the gods and goddesses. Wait, what? Like, Chrissy, what? They made the gods light skin. Yeah, and they like made their noses Small. like Sharp. smaller. Sharp. Um, they made the women like less like curvy and like all that kind of stuff, um, which makes sense, right? Because we have gods who are like like there's a like, Krishna who's like blue, and then Ganesh and like um, Hanuman and all that kind of stuff. Like clearly like beyond humans, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's so wild. That's something that that like that's still playing out today. And it's like, no one's like, we should change them back to their original form. Because right. now it's like norm. No, but no one's taught them that that was changed. I remember growing up, I was always um, a lot darker. And even though my family, my dad's side of the family specifically, um, much love to them. But they clearly preference my sister because she was she's very, very fair. Um, I remember... One time they'd brought us these two Barbie dolls because my mom had a rule, which is no matter what it was, if it was birthdays, Christmas, anything, like if one of us got a gift, the other one had to get a gift because we we're just four and that's how it worked. Yeah. Um, so they brought us these Barbies and my sister went to grab Teresa, which she's the black Barbie. Um, and she like wanted to go play with her and my aunt like snatched it and was like, no and she gave her the like barbie and she was like this one's yours and she gave me teresa i mean i was living my best life like teresa looked great like she had the better hair she like <laughs> like she looked cute like the colors look better on her in my opinion um but it was like interesting because like every doll i was given was like oftentimes it was black and so like that was like an interesting thing for me because and like i didn't understand growing up like like I because I didn't go to like uh nursery school or anything like that so like I was very sheltered and like whatever education I got at an early age was like from my mother and she taught me it in a very like Caribbean way but she was just like yeah this is what you look like <laughs> like and, but I didn't like put in my head of like they were equating me to being black um because my sister was so fair and like that was always interesting right because like blackness and whiteness are like constructs and like Indian people in America have a history of being classified as being black. Um, wow. Rana, where do you see yourself in like five years? Because you know you're working mm -hmm. in health ad administration, but like you're also this amazing trans activist, Indo-Caribbean activist. You're making spaces available for like trans lives, um, and you're also a makeup artist. Like you know, where do you see yourself in five years? How do you want to change the world? Like, yeah, I want to continue doing the good work. I want to probably in five years, start a nonprofit. Um, a passion of mine is to be like an ambassador for the, like a trans ambassador or like a LGBTQ ambassador for the Caribbean, the West Indies, mm -hmm. and change the culture there and make it to where 
um, there's proper access, there's resources for the LGBTQ community, that there's at least an LGBTQ community center or like a trans center in every on every island. Um, and that people aren't gully queens and gully kings and living, you know, impoverished and having to seek asylum because mm -hmm. they live in a country that's gonna, you know, threaten their lives. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I'm working towards. And I have big dreams of doing Bollywood. Let's see. Yeah, I would love to do some, like, I mean, after seeing Masaba on there, I'm like, okay, it's not like, so far fetched, you know. Oh. I see an Afro Indo Caribbean woman. Okay, maybe I'm the next. Um, I definitely want to do more with like fashion and beauty. Uh, see myself like being the cover for, like being the face for some brand. And um, I want to get on the cover of Vogue India. That would be monumental for me. That'd be monumental for us. Yes, for yeah. us. Yeah, we need that. Sweet. We need that representation. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think you're already an ambassador for the LGBT community. And um, for Indo, Indo, like Afro Indo community, Indo Caribbean, yeah. like, like all those intersectionalities. Like, and that's huge. Because like, if, you, if you look at it, like, yeah, there's Rihanna and there's Nicki Minaj for that side. But to represent the LGBTQ, it's a lot harder, I think. And it's a lot more, you get a lot more shit for it. Whereas yeah. like being half black, half Indian is like whatever you're half black or half Indian, it is what it is. Being part of the LGBTQ community, you're you get a lot of flag mm -hmm. just because of who you are. Hard, yeah. And a lot of people have just had to like stay quiet and like keep it a secret and all that stuff. So I think if you can play that role, I think that's the biggest thing you can do for people. Getting on Vogue India would be sick, right? Getting into Bollywood, all that stuff is amazing. But even doing the work that you've been able to do so far, um, it's 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 game changing, right? Like you're you're able to change the game that way. Um, so that's why. So another reason why we're so surprised that you took the time to come talk to us. Yeah, because we're so you're thankful. Obviously, like, making so many differences. So it's it's awesome to see that. I think you're a good ambassador. I can't wait for you to have your own Netflix show. Like that would be amazing. Like I could tell my kids, like yes, like we, t we she manifested this on our call. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, yeah, let's make it happen. Lana, 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 <laughs> Lana. Lana. <laughs> I'll make I'll make a few calls to Vogue India. I got you. I know some people. Okay. <laughs>